Good afternoon. Welcome to Inside Indiana Sports Now with Kent Sterling. It's Friday, March 19th, 2021. We're brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. Dr. Mike O'Neill, the best dentist I've ever gone to, the only dentist I've gone to the last 27 years. Brush, floss, call Dr. Mike, 317-849-2933. Speaking of Dr. Mike, hey, if you like, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Let's go ring the bell. Let's talk about sports. And today, not just sports, but communicating like an adult and understanding when somebody is communicating like an adult. We take everything so literally. People in the comment sections of these videos are yelling at me, calling me a lying snake for proffering the notion that Brad Stevens is coming to Indiana or may come to Indiana. I'm not saying he's going to do it. I think really the odds are about 30, 35% right now that he takes the job. But here's how adults talk exactly the way he did on the radio in Boston. What do you think he's going to say to people who ask him if he's going to Indiana? You know what? My wife, Tracy, she's also my agent. She's in uh, deep uh, kind of conversations and negotiations with Indiana University. And if those negotiations are fruitful, yes, I am going to Indiana. However, if they are not fruitful, then I'm not going to go to Indiana. I'm going to stay right here in Boston and be the coach of the Celtics. Do you think in a million years, a guy with a functional brain would say something like that and tell that truth to the media? There is not a chance in the world. Adults do not do that. There's a tweet today about Brad Stevens at shoot-around. The, the Celtics are going to play tonight against the Kings in Boston. And, and so, hey, uh, the, what about Brad? Well, he doesn't seem any different today. He seems just like same old Brad. How do you think he's going to – how will he seem? Do you think he's going to show up with his bags packed and check his watch all the time to make sure he doesn't miss his flight? Is that what he's going to do? Of course he's going to be the same guy because you, if, if you have a job like this, if you have a high-end job and you negotiate for another job, but you're still working at your previous job as that contract is being negotiated and you haven't told your current employer that you might be leaving or will be leaving, you know what you do? You show up like a pro and you do your job. That Brad Stevens was comporting himself, as he always does at a shoot-around, means he's a professional human being. That's what it means. It doesn't mean that he's going to stay as a head coach of the Celtics. It doesn't mean that he's going to leave either. But if you think somehow it's lying for Brad Stevens to say what he said on the radio a few days ago, or that showing up and being same old Brad at the shoot-around is somehow revealing of what's happening... You don't know about adulthood, and you don't know what guys in that position act like when they're leaving because you can't tell the difference. They're pros. This is the way life is. This is the way adults behave. Danny Ainge knows this. The guys with the Celtics know that. And those of you who are saying, look, it'd be disloyal for Brad Stevens to go to Bloomington because of his former affiliation with Butler and his current affiliation his wife's current affiliation as a member of the Board of Trustees. There is that. But if you think somehow that's disloyal, what are you talking about? He left the university. He, le he went wheels up and took another job. This isn't about loyalty. This is about a profession where either you're in the process of getting your next job or you're in the process of losing your current job. That's the way coaching is. Look at Steve Wojcikowski. Gone at Marquette, right? Goners fired after seven seasons. It happens all the time. And Brad Stevens has had a great run with Boston. Eight years is a huge, expansive time for a major league sports coach or manager to spend with one franchise. Joe Madden won a World Series. He did five years on the north side of Chicago. You know, this is eight years, and Brad Stevens has never been to the NBA Finals. That is a phenomenal run for a really good guy. If that run continues, I hope for all the success in the world for Brad Stevens. If he goes to Indiana, I hope he's successful there, and I hope he's happy there. And so, in, in figuring out what's going to float Brad's boat, we've talked about this. You know what? He's a different kind of cat. It's not all about money. That doesn't mean it's not about money at all, but it's not about money. All about money. 
for Brad. You know what I mean? It, it's a consideration. It's not the consideration. So there you go. And as far as Indiana not having deep enough pockets to outbid the Celtics, are you out of your mind? You have, I don't know what the uh, the net worth in totality of Indiana graduates is or the alums and the way that they fund that endowment. But this is not a lot of money to those guys. Whatever Brad Stevens is going to be paid is a write-off, a handsome write-off, but a write-off for a lot of these people. That's how adults behave. Now let's talk about it. And is there a timeline? Who knows? And people are saying, Indiana University is saying that there's not going to be an event today and there won't be one this weekend. Burr, 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 burr. What do you th- Yes, we're planning an event. They're putting chairs out on the floor at Assembly Hall. What are you talking about? Of course they're going to say that. My God Almighty, nobody in that, everybody denies everything until they announce everything. That, that's how you work in the world. Let's go. Let's get with the program. We've seen this before. All right. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts, they lost a guy. Anthony Walker, he's gone. He was a free agent. He has signed with the Cleveland Browns, a one-year, $3.5 million deal. So uh, Anthony Walker, who I think had a large role in the development of Darius Leonard, uh, because Anthony Walker, a brilliant tactician, understood kind of the way a quarterback like Philip Rivers does not get fooled by what he's presented from a defense. Anthony Walker did not get fooled by offenses and the way they lined up. And Anthony Walker would communicate that both to Darius Leonard, Bobby Okereke, the guy in the defensive backfield. He was an important part of this defense in that he was a coach on the field. Now he's going to be a coach on the field for the Browns. A somewhat slow-footed coach on the field for the Browns, he is a run-stopping linebacker. He's not a guy you ever want to have isolated in coverage against anybody. But if you use him correctly, you're going to get something really good out of Anthony Walker. And here's how you knew that Anthony Walker was leaving, right? It was adios to Anthony Walker because Chris Ballard said he loved him. And if Chris Ballard says he loves you, you better put the house on the market. That is, that's code for you're a goner. Anthony Walker, I love Anthony Walker. Anthony Walker showed up every day and worked real hard and was a consummate teammate, was in the film room all the time, and boy, he's a brilliant guy, blah, 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 blah. If, if he eulogizes you, you are gone. And that's, it, he'll figure that out if he hasn't already, and he'll stop doing that. He actually did that with Marlon Mack, and I thought Marlon Mack was going to be gone. I love Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack, blah, blah, blah. I thought, oh, Marlon Mack, uh, he's a ghost. One year, $2 million to stay for Marlon Mack. So that's a good thing. Did the same thing with Jacoby Brissett. I, I love Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett, nothing but class. He's a class act and really dug deep into the community, did a lot of good here. And we love Jacoby Brissett as a quarterback and a human being. Goodbye, Jacoby. That's the way, that's the way things go in the NFL. The NFL is that, you know, and and everybody knows it. And it's really hard for management within sports, within business. You know, if you're a human being at all, and you go into a conference room and you're talking about careers, people who have been with the company for a long time, and is it time to cut ties with this person and move forward, upgrading that slot or eliminate that expense? If you're making cuts, just raw cuts, it's really, really hard. Because you know what that is. You know that that name on the page is a human being, and you know that human being, and you know the family of that human being, and you know what this is going to do to that human being as that person's cut from the payroll and then cut from the company. You know what that is. But at the same time, it's your job. You know, Chris Ballard, I'm sure, loves every single player in that locker room. All 53 guys on the active roster and every guy in the practice squad absolutely loves those guys and has great admiration for those guys. But he's got to be too tracked. He's got to love those guys on one hand. On the, and on the other hand, you've got to be able to evaluate those guys and evaluate whether they're going to help you win a championship because that's his job. And that's kind of the law he has sworn to uphold. The 53 best are going to make the roster, and we're going to do everything we can to put the best 53 on the field, right? And that's what you're going to do, and that's what Chris Ballard does. At the same time, he indulges a little bit 
in that humanity that is within him and that we all kind of vibe with and that we all kind of admire. It, it's a nice thing. Like, we, you don't see it with Bill Belichick, right? You don't see it with a lot of guys. A lot of guys, it, that's all they are. They're numbers on a page. That's, you know, they're a 40 time and hand size and, you know, vertical leap and length and all of this stuff. That's what they are. How tall are they? Blah, 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 blah. Some guys get to know the guys, and that makes it really, really difficult to be that kind of boss. It's tough to be that guy. It's much harder to be that guy than it is to be the hard ass who takes out his red pen and draws lines through names and then replaces them with other lines that he knows or she knows at some point a line will be drawn through. There is going to be a time in the NFL, Major League Baseball, the NHL, the NBA, every single professional sport, there's going to be a red pen for you and a line that goes right through the middle of your name. And that's the way it is. And that's how that's how your career ends. That's how adults communicate. Chris Ballard communicates with the media by extolling the virtues of those he is about to cut ties with and talk about the love that he feels for them. And that's the way it is. That's professional stuff. All right, Colgate. I loved Colgate going into this game. A 3-14 game against Arkansas. I thought Arkansas was reckless. I thought that they would take Colgate of the Patriot League too lightly and that Colgate had a hell of a chance to win. Colgate had a 14-point lead in that game in the first half, and then Arkansas scored the last 17 of the first half, and then in the second half, Colgate kind of hung in, and then Arkansas kind of did what they do, and that's exert their superior length and athleticism and athletic ability over the uh, the scrappy uh, tubes of Colgate. I, I don't know what their nickname is. I guess I should. I call them the tubes because, hey, why not? Everybody makes the toothpaste delusion, and why wouldn't I? Am I above that? No, I'm not above that. All weekend long, we're watching hoops, right? Illinois destroyed Drexel. That's the way it is. Um, what are you going to do? That's Drexel is not going to be able to com- compete with Illinois, and I got to tell you the truth in my bracket, and every single year this happens. I mean, every year forever. Going back to high school, we had the, end, the big money NCAA pool. That's what we did. And we continue to, and we do brackets. And in every bracket contest I've been in where money has been involved, I have lost. And I don't know why. Maybe just I'm unlucky. Maybe I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. In this tournament, though, I got Texas as a three seed winning in every bracket that I've filled out, every single one. And I look at them all individually. It's not like I go, where's Texas? Bing, 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 winners. I don't do that. I'm like, okay, you look at who they play in the first round, and then you you kind of go through it, second round, third round, and I'm doing them all, right? I like the way Texas plays. Maybe it's because they absolutely wiped the floor with Indiana. Maybe it was that, but I've seen them play three or four times, and I think they kind of hit a lull in the middle of the season, maybe like uh, into February just a little bit. And then I thought they got really good. And I thought Shaka Shaka Smart is a guy who understands the NCAA tournament and how to get people to play well in it. So I've got Texas winning and winning and winning and winning. Good news for Purdue, who plays at 725 tonight, and they're all in Indianapolis. So let's stop saying in Indianapolis. Looking live at Indianapolis. Well, they're all in Indianapolis. Of course you're looking live at Indianapolis. I think Purdue goes to the Final Four. I do. First time they will have played in the Final Four since 1980. How about that? With Lee Rose as the coach and Joe Barry Carroll. Man, that's going back a long way. That's going back. I don't know if I ever saw that Purdue team play. Uh, Of course, why would I? You know, went to high school in New Albany. Went to college at Indiana. What would I be doing? watching the Boilermakers back in 1980, for God's sake. Enjoy the weekend. The weather's going to be a little bit warmer tomorrow, warmer yet on Sunday. All kinds of basketball, like from noon until midnight, as always. Finally, it's back after last year when we missed it. We've got the NCAA tournament back, even though it's minus Indiana, Notre Dame, and Butler, and we hate that. Breakfast with Kent, Monday morning, 6 a.m., live on Facebook Live, and updates at once on the place where news always comes first, right here.